What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Yukon Huskies Dynasty in premier fashion. This is the complete entire game, every single play, even the pause menu. I got everything in here. So I didn't want to do this in a live stream format just because it's just going to save us one more game. I think the Syracuse game is the big one. And then it just saves us another game that we didn't have to show on a live stream. It's just basically another hour that we didn't have to do in a live stream. So tomorrow night, Wednesday, we're going to start off against Syracuse, depending on how this game all shakes out. It can set us up for a really big matchup or just another matchup. You know what I mean? So let's watch this game, enjoy it, and let me know in the comments section below if you kind of like this, if you kind of like this format. I might even uh, start doing this a little bit more for this series. See you in the post game. The returner will field it and try to set up his offense in great field position. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic than they get him on the ground at the 20. The Huskies offense will get the first crack at it here. And here he comes. This... knows it too you know every single snap this deep he's going to take a shot makes the grab on the left side touchdown huskies and once he found some daylight it was time to make a house call well there's no secret who this offense wants to get the ball to and on the very first play they find a matchup on the outside one-on-one -on -one. they take a shot to him vertically down the field and he does the rest. He is so athletic, and he is going to be a problem for this defense all game long. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And with the extra point, they get the first seven of the game. If only... coordinator one play big chunk yardage put points on the board just like that he'll start the return inside his spot and they'll bring him down to get the offense started on the next drive so clemson's offense will go to work for the first time today and there's no doubt guys we will be focused on these two star playmakers on the outside. Well, I'm curious to see how much man coverage we're going to see today. I don't know if either of these defenses is confident enough to go mano a mano with these two dudes on the field. They're two of the best in the nation. These cornerbacks aren't looking for man-to-man -man coverage. I can promise you that. Like, give me some help over here. But we're going to see some split screens, and we're going to see who had more catches, who had more yards. We're definitely going to be breaking that down this game. Line getting set on second down. From the gun, the Gale looking for room. Didn't find a lot of room. Let's give him two out of the 20. And these defensive tackles just eat people. They swallow human beings when you get near them. They're so big, so strong. And those guys, those running backs coming, they just need a mitt. They put one mitt on a running back, and he usually falls to the ground just because of their sheer mass and strength. They make the stop, but not before they do their work up top and pick up a first down. He might have expected to see this DB up in his receiver's kitchen instead. Nice little zone, and they pick up the first. Man, offenses are getting so good, Reese, at seeing the holes in the zone, knowing you're in zone, knowing where to sit down, how to make it an easy pitch and catch for the quarterback, and that's what it was on third and short. Well, just nothing doing on that last run, and they knew coming into this one they were going to be challenged, right? This is one of the best defenses in all of college football. For them to have any shot, they're going to have to do a lot better running the football. He's looking for an open man on second down. Got his man out of the backfield. He's really close to that first down marker, but they stop him just a bit short. Lining up, trying to convert this third and short from the 40. Corners right up on that line of scrimmage. And it goes through his hands. Oh, he had an explosive play right there for the taking, but couldn't reel it in. QB decided not to hand it off on that RPO. Defense, great job taking the throw away, now Number setting up four. Clemson will send the punt team out. 
The punter going to get his first work of the afternoon. Able to get the first one of the day away, they did have to send him out three times in that victory last week. UConn going back to work on offense. A quick strike touchdown up top the last time they had it, Jesse. They'd love to do it again. No doubt. They've got so many playmakers on the perimeter, David. Just find a way to get these guys the ball in space. Yeah, and you already started, man. Making that big play, opening up this offense. He's going for it all. Makes the catch on the left. Off he goes. And he ran away from the defense to take it in. Touchdown, Husky. And what nice play design. You get your speedster, you put him in the slot, you usually get a better matchup. And then what do you do? You fade him towards that sideline, run a go. Nice ball thrown way out wide. He just runs underneath it and just too much speed. Couldn't catch him. Gets in the end zone for six. Well, the defense needs to find a way to slow this guy down. We're only in the first quarter, and already this guy has over 100 yards receiving. They have got to find an answer for him. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. 14, Clemson, zero. He'll bring it back from inside his five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there. And... The Tigers, 19. Clemson ready to dial up some ball plays. They've got it on offense. To say this has been a slow start is a bit of an understatement, and they really need to get it going here, Jesse. That's right. The opponent, they're firing on all cylinders right out of the gate. Offensively for this unit, they've been slow and struggling. They need an explosive play to wake themselves up. Yeah, and it's just the first quarter, so it's not the end of the world. You've seen slow starts, but you got to continue to pick and pick and pick until you find that play or, or that scheme that you can use against this defense. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. Well, the linebacker showing you read and react. He knew exactly where that running play was going, and he beat the football to the line of scrimmage and forced the TFL. On third and long, trying to have a big completion here. Working the middle, it's complete. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. Here comes Clemson with another first down. Out of the gun, the inside handoff to the running back. Defense there to stop him after a two-yard gain to the 31. The big defensive tackles in the middle, they're not always the best pass rushers, but they are strong, and I say country strong. They put their hands on you, you feel it. They lock people out on the line. Of Fires into traffic, intercepted. Didn't really have room to operate on the return, but he hands him the ball at the 32. Great job by the safety. You see safety's back in coverage, reading the quarterback's eyes, understanding where he's throwing the football. Great break, great interception. The UConn offense goes back to work. They torched this defense with an explosive passing play for a score last time out. Let's see if they go right back at him. And he'll make his way out of bounds after the solid pickup. Sometimes people say, if you're good enough, what's the big deal about going on the road? Well, if you're not careful, you might find out in a spot like this one, guys. Yeah, no doubt about it. This is a hostile environment, and you know you're going to be getting the opponent's A game for this one. They've circled this one all offseason, so they better be ready to bring it today, though. And the hardest thing to do in college football is to go on the road. Everything about it changes, and you want to shut this crowd up early. You don't want to give them belief, because if it starts to build throughout the game, look out. Made a little something out of that run. He picked up a couple down to the 14. They're strong and they're strong. Defensive tackles, they're strong. They're such big jokers in the middle where they just lock out those offensive linemen. And running backs, listen, they don't have much of a chance. When you got that 300-plus pound guy grabbing you around the shoulder pad, you tend to go to the ground pretty quick. Can't hang on in the end zone, and that one is going to drive him crazy when he watches it. It'll be third down. He wants to throw it. Safe completion on the screen. And they knock him down, but he got past the line to gain. Really nice job there of the quarterback. Reading coverage, he knew exactly where to go with the football and at what exact time. The timing could not have been better. They get the completion on third down, setting up first and goal. Wants to go up top. Let's it go to the end zone. 
and swatted down by the defense to stop the scoring opportunity. Can the defense stop them again on second and goal? Well, the game plan's been pretty simple offensively, right? They are taking shots, and they're being aggressive, throwing it down the field. This guy's already got two touchdowns. Into the end zone he goes. Touchdown, UConn. No midseason concentration laps here in week seven as they push out that lead. This guy just has a nose for the end zone, and you love his ability to find creases, use his speed in the open field, and go score. He's been really good for his offense early this year. That already his fifth rushing touchdown on the season. And the extra point is true, and the lead balloons to 21. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. Number 18, set to kick it off. And he hauls it in, and everybody's on the edge of their seats. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Clemson has their paws on it, and they'll send out the offense. After that last pick, David, they really need to take care of the ball this time. No doubt. And, and Palmer, I want to know what Spurrier said to you on the sideline after a throw. Do that again, and you'll be right here beside me for the rest of the game. <laughs> you got to go out. You got to call your plays, and I hope this coaching staff isn't going to be afraid to throw at this drop. It's in complete, and he's lucky to get that one back. Almost intercepted. Offense gets set for second down. They'll throw again after the incompletion. Caught over the middle. It's McCoy, and he was off to the races, and he gets it to the 45. Looking for a productive play on first down. DB's right up on the receivers. And a good, solid pickup for the defense cuts him down. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. He's looking to throw. And that pass will be jarred loose on second down. That brings up third down. We'll see if the offense can move the chains after that incompletion. It's complete. Hit the gas, kid, wide open ahead. He gets it all the way down to the five-yard line. A terrific catch and run before he stops. And the Tigers line it up with a first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. It's now second and goal. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. He's looking to throw. Snags it. That completion has them right on the doorstep. They'll mark it at the one. I'll say this, man. In college football, you see a lot of bad tackling. You didn't see it right there. That was an awesome job. First off, being there at the point of attack, once the tight end made the catch, there was no doubt he was going down. Great job form tackle. And he takes it in for the score. Touchdown, Clemson. And I love it. I love the physicality of this offense. It's third and goal. I trust my offensive line to pave the way, give the ball to my running back, and know he's going to physically punch this thing into the end zone. And after the extra point, they're now down 21-7. to seven. And for a quick update, let's go to Kevin Connors in the studio. All right, guys, a little update on what else is happening in college football this weekend. Nebraska is down, but they are not out of it. Not there in Lincoln. One of the most special places to watch a game in all of college football. They're trailing by 10 to Purdue. We are the eyes and ears of the college football fan, and we've got you covered all day here in studio, guys. Oh, and how about that? I know Kevin and those guys will be keeping an eye on it for us. It's just simple. Simple first down run, showing your physicality, setting your offense up in a good spot. That's the end of the period, and UConn has the lead. They largely dominated this first quarter, as indicated by the stats. We'll start the quarter offense, about to snap it on second down. He'll do it himself. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. We 
really, really nice football player. Man, I gotta understand option football. I gotta play my responsibility, make sure that I know what I'm doing. Look at the linebacker. Great job doing that. Staying patient, getting to the quarterback, making the big tackle. Let me tell you, this senior quarterback can flat fit it in a tight window. The Huskies with the first and ten. Power football with the run. He tried to find some running room, but they get him stopped. Great team defense on that run. Everybody doing their job. People winning their one-on-ones. D linemen staying in their gaps. Linebackers and DBs filling. You just can't do it better. That's caught. It's West. Really nice pickup there as they have it out to the 44 with the first down. And the Huskies look to keep this drive humming. He'll keep it himself. Still on his feet at the 45. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. They're about to run a dirty half dozen plays on this drive. From the gun, running back gets the gift. And sticking to the run. I tell you what, a lot of teams that are really good are really stubborn, and they continue to run the football even with little success. So this offense is going to continue to focus on running the football, you can tell. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Now the quarterback changing the original play call. On second down, he'll let it fly. Fires to the right. He makes a catch. And he's knocked down immediately, but they're in the red zone at the 14. The magic bean is spinning out of control. Already over 200 yards in the first half. Yeah, they're being aggressive offensively, throwing the football, trying to take advantage of this defense on the back end. They've got their quarterback right now in a groove. And the ball is picked off. And he's brought down, and this defense gets the ball back for its own. First down here for the offense. Corner showing press. They want to be physical here. He'll start this drive firing. Oh, and he gets downfield for the big catch. Looking for more room. And he eluded the defense, and he'll take it all the way. Touchdown, Tigers! And I tell you what, that passing touchdown, man, that should spark this whole team. Like, the comeback is more than on now. Like, they got the touchdown. They cut into the lead. You, you want to get a stop and go into the half, get all the juices, all the excitement, and be like, listen, the passing game's rolling. We got this. The comeback's in full effect. Getting set for the point after. And with the extra point, they're down a touchdown, 21-14. If only it were always this easy for the offensive coordinators. One play, big chunk yardage, put points on the board just like that. On the run from inside his own five. And the return man has no place to run, no place to hide, and a place to be tapped. UConn going back to work on offense. They're going to open this drive with a pass. Makes a connection. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. UConn quick to the line. He'll come out throwing on first down. Oh, he's going to try to hit him deep. And the pass is intercepted. And the offense makes the tackle in frustration after the interception drive comes up empty and it's a turnover. This is obviously not a great start for this quarterback here. Two interceptions already in this game. He's got to do a much better job with his decision making. This offense is stuck way back in its own end of the field. Fires to the big fella. And good coverage by the defense, just a short game. This offense has a second down play. He's looking to throw. Quickly to the tight end. At the 20, he's got space. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. Comes out throwing on first down. And the pressure gets there. And down he goes at the 18. 
There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. So let's see if they can make up for that loss on second down from the 18. He's looking to throw. Oh, what a grab by the defense. And they'll close in on him after a good return on the interception. I tell you what, it puts you in a tough position when you're backed up inside your own 20 trying to come out. But when you're a defense and you can force a turnover and you already set your offense up in scoring position, they are going to be extremely happy, and that offensive coordinator is going to look extremely smart. And it's incomplete. If you're going to take a hit like that, you might as well hang on to the ball. Operating in the red zone here on second down. Receivers telling the quarterback what they see. After the incompletion, they go back up top. And here comes the heat, and they get home, and they get him at the 21. Third play of the drive, and they need to make something happen here on third and long. Looking downfield, and he needs a bunch. And they can't make the play on third down. And the offense got themselves in a tough situation. Third and long, so hard to execute, especially when the field starts to shrink. But the good news is they got a field goal in their back pocket. It's good. And they'll push that lead out a little further. So they put the field goal on the board and about to kick it away and hoping that'll be the final point of this first half. He'll bring it back looking for help. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Clemson ready to dial up some ball plays. They've got it on offense. This late in the half, you're behind. You'd love to create something before the break to build momentum, Jesse. But you've also had some miscues on offense, a big part of why you're losing the game right now. I'd take it into halftime, make my adjustments, and come out ready in the second half. Yeah, I'm going to take it into halftime too, Paul. But I'm trying to put some points up right here. Be aggressive, set the tone, be like, hey, listen, this is what you're going to get in the second half, so find something really quick that you can go to. Here's a timeout on the field. Tight game here late in the first half. Looking to move it through the air. And the physical play there forces the incompletion on first down. Let's see what they've got on second down. He's looking to throw. Getting some heat. And they got him. He'll get him down for the sack. Got to get to the line quickly for this third down play. Looking to throw, and he needs a bunch. Pocket starts to collapse. And he just throws it away. That is not what you're looking for on third down. Fourth down coming up. So Clemson is lining up to punt this one away. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. Couldn't get away from that cover team, and they've got him down at the 23. They'll have just enough time to get one more snap before the half. He's looking to throw it. Unloads to the wideout. The pass falls incomplete, and that's how we'll finish this half. First half in the books. Time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Fellas, Yeoman's work so far in Death Valley, and welcome in to the halftime report. Toughest job inside that stadium right now might just be the scoreboard operator after all those first downs and touchdowns. Big plays have to find this one, thanks to two of the best receiving core in all of college football. Let's see if these defenses can adjust and make the necessary chess moves. And with that, let's send it back to our guys high above Howard's Rock. UConn has it teed up to start this second half. And he takes this from inside the five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. Clemson has their paws on it, and they'll send out the offense. Maybe adjustments or attitude or attitude adjustments, but they've got to find a way to run the ball at least some here in the second half. I do think you said something that's important. I think running the 
football is an attitude. Like it starts with the offensive lineman and being physical, having a nasty attitude, running back, same thing. I think they need more of that in the second half. You know, and I think if any of you're this defense, you have an opportunity to make a statement here. Yeah, I know you guys went in at halftime and you riled yourselves up and you told yourself that you think you can run the ball on us. On this very first drive, we're going to prove to you, just like in the first 30 minutes, you cannot. They'll get the first down. It's spotted on the 49. The Tigers come to the line with a new set of downs. To the air on first down gets it out fast. He's brought down quickly. Minimal gain there. Still a bit short of the first down. Here comes the offense on second down. The gift to the back. Hard running there. Across the 25. He's got room. And you can see the offense just feeling itself. They've got it down to the 21. Line gets set. First down. He wants to throw. Fires to the wideout. Touchdown, Tigers! And the comeback is on! Gotta start cutting into this lead somewhere. Now the question, will they have enough time? But that's step one. You gotta get that first score. You gotta get back in the ball game and get some of that momentum back on your side. You still got more work to do, but step one accomplished. Let's go to the studio now and check in with Kevin Connors. Kevin, what do you got? Boys, if it's happening in college football, we've got eyes on it. Check this out. Cincinnati is down, but not out of it. Not in Nippert Stadium. One of the best home field advantages in all of college football. They're trailing by 10 to Kansas. We promise to keep you posted on what goes down in this exciting college football matchup. And how about that one? Kevin will be keeping an eye on everything going on elsewhere. You ain't getting by all these guys right up the middle unless your offensive line and your tight ends and everybody is putting in the work up front, committing to blocking. The running back does a great job finding the hole, exploding through. How about that nice, big, huge game? If I'm the OC, let's call that one again. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Lost one on that last one. It's second and 11. Quarterback reacting to what the D is showing. On second down, he'll fire. And a big play on the left sideline. Excellent awareness to get that foot in bounds. He's been a matchup problem all season long. Defenses just don't know how to solve the puzzle. And with that last catch, over 500 yards receiving now on the year for him. Off the play fake on first down. Throws to the tight end. Just too much juice on that one as he airmails his receiver out of bounds. I got to be honest, I thought this tight end was going to have a much bigger role in this game. They wanted to get him the football early and often, but after that drop here in the second half, he still doesn't have a catch. One back in the backfield, he gets the carry. You keep pounding away at this defense and make them play the run. If you can get this many a jump, they're going to have to commit more guys to the box, more guys to the run, and then you open it up for the passing game. They're going to try to throw for it on third down. The sweet feet keeping the play alive. Trying to make magic on the scramble. Nice job there to limit the running room, and they get him out of bounds after a short game. This is why third down is so difficult for quarterbacks, because the defense substitutes. They put faster guys on the field, and they've got all their different exotic looks they've been game planning all week for. Some things you haven't seen on film yet, and it confuses your offensive line. It confuses you. And you're out here just trying to make plays, trying to do something right to get a first down. Wasn't able to gain a lot there. They make the tackle, but they'll move the chains, and it's a first down for UConn. Hey, fourth and short, it's time to be physical. You give it to your running back. You can see he gets physical, gets downhill, gets the first down. It's complete to the right. And a good job of coverage by that defense. Just a short pickup. The noise level is relentless here on second down. Here's the handoff. They get him on the ground. A six-yard run in the red zone down to the 11. I like this guy as a running back because he can run between the tackles and he can also go outside. He can really do it all. 
Boy, they love to pick up this conversion and go to work with a first and goal. They'll try to pick it up on the ground. Touchdown, Huskies! And they take it in for six more points. Another rushing touchdown. That's now two on the game. This offense thought they could come into this one running the ball, being the more physical team, and they look like it right now. Ready to try the point after. And with the extra point, they're now up by a touchdown and a field goal at 10. Just about set to kick it away. UConn, 31, Clemson, 21. He'll take the return and try to improve the field position. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. This quarterback has been really good today. He's been on top of it, seeing things really, really well. That pass right there put him over the 300-yard mark. That's a pretty good day. Going up top on first down. He makes the connection. They make the stop right there. Good pickup, but still short of the first down. That last completion has him set up second and short. He's looking to throw. It's complete. Nothing but green grass down the middle. He's at the 10. Touchdown, Tiger. You thought they were done. They're not. They're back, baby. An unbelievable timing with the quarterback and wide receiver. Get it to him in his hands, right on his frame, where he can run after the catch and do some serious damage. And that's why he's so dangerous, because of that ability after the catch. For these DBs in this game, you've got to tackle the reception, because if you don't get him down, he's taking it to the house. Here he comes from inside his own five. Nice job executing all of the assignments as they put a stop to that return at the 22. The UConn offense goes back to work. Jesse, a very productive drive last time wound up with a touchdown. Yeah, mixing and matching play calling really well. Nice balance on that last one, Dave. Let's see what they can do here in this next drive. Yeah, and I don't expect anything different. When you put together a drive like that, I would do more of the same. Keep the pace, keep it going. He misses his man. The accuracy just not what it needed to be on that play. And how nice is it to have the home crowd going absolutely bananas? Communication is harder. The, the snapping the football, everybody being on time. Man, this crowd really affecting the football game. Defense was not fooled by that screen to the back, and they'll stop him short of the marker. It'll be fourth down. UConn will have to punt it away. First time today we've seen a punter go to work. He'll call for the fair catch here. Offense getting set for first down. They'll ride the running back and leave it with it. Got behind those pads and picked up three after the 35. Got three on first down at second and seven. He's looking to throw. Finds his man. It's McCoy. They'll move the change after he gets it to the 43-yard line. After moving the sticks with the pass, here we are on first down. They go to the ground. They pick up half of it. It'll be second and five. I think one of the hardest things to do is stick to the run when it's not working. But it's those runs right there that are the reason why you have to do it, right? You can't get too one-dimensional. Keep slipping those runs in there. Keep getting a little bit of positive yards. Next thing you know, you look up and you might break one of those once you got them a little bit tighter. Trying to pick up a first down. Trying to make that rush think on the draw play here. That'll get the job done and move the chains, and they'll mark the ball at the 45. Time winding down in the quarter as they come to the line. He's going to pass. And this will be incomplete. A big hit there forces second down. Plenty of time for one more snap before the end of the quarter. Wants to throw on second down. This one's complete. They get him on the ground, and that'll be the final play of this third period. 
That's the end of the period, and UConn has the lead. Let's take a quick look at the national rankings to see how this playoff race is shaping up. They'll break the seal on this quarter here on first down. Use the play fake, now to throw. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. Play action pass success has a lot to do with selling that fake. You could tell defense was not buying it, got in the backfield, got the big play. It's a draw. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. They try to go draw, but there's just way too much penetration in the middle of the offensive line, and that the offense has a negative play. He's taking the shot. Got it. Touchdown, Clemson! And with that, they move out front here in the fourth. I think one of the most underrated things we talk about with the QB is timing. Being able to get the ball out of his hands to his receiver where he can continue to catch the football and run with it. Nice pitch, nice catch, nice play in the fourth quarter when you needed it for this team to take the lead. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point is good, and every point counts. It's now a four-point lead in the fourth. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. And he passes on the touchback. Here he comes. They drag him down at the 22. He gambled for the big return out of the end zone and came up a little short. UConn going back to work on offense. The last time we saw this offense, we had to look quick. It was a three and out, Jesse. They just had no rhythm in that last drive. So someone's going to have to step up and make a play, David, and get this thing going. Yeah, let's find some juice. Find your guy. Find those plays that you know you can run inside out, forward, backwards. Get some first downs. Get some positive momentum. Solid pickup of four on first down. It's second and six. Quarterback checking the play. On second down, he'll let it fly. Fires to the tight end. And they reacted well to the completion, but it was too late to keep them from getting the first down. And this set of downs gets started from the 33, first and 10. Slams ahead for a yard out to the 33. Didn't get much on first down, it's second and nine. He'll try it again. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Yeah, I think the running back kind of went low on that last running play. I'm not sure he was designed to go that direction. He tried to make it happen on his own. Fortunately, ended up losing yards. These fans stepping up to help this defense on third down. Looking to throw, and he needs a chunk play. Got him downfield. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. Yeah, and he's been throwing it all over the yard, and he's now over 300 yards on the day. So it's been a successful day. Now, 300 yards, I don't know, Palmer, 300 nowadays, that's like what back in the day for you? <laughs> that would have been 500. I would have won the Heisman, man. It's a big deal today in college football, no doubt. But listen, he's in a rhythm right now. He's in a groove. We've seen good decision-making. He's been playing on time, and he's been deadly accurate throwing it. And guess what? This game is far from over. And maybe he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Well, they want to come out and try to get the run game established, but up front defensively, they made a play. They gave up nothing on that one. Got to find some breathing room if you're going to establish yourself on the ground, and there wasn't any that time. Yeah, Reese, I wonder now if this offense is maybe going to try to get to the perimeter of the field and see if they can use their speed to hurt this defense. Trailing by a possession, they need to keep the ball. They'll try to convert on fourth down. The receivers often will run their route based on a side adjustment. On fourth down, looking for the completion. Makes a grab enough for the first. Well, they just drained all the suspense out of the fourth down conversion, moving the chains easily. That's a great example of the receiver knowing exactly where the first down marker is. He got the depth he needed to get, so once he was able to make the catch, he already knew he had it. Now, a fresh set of downs. 
We've reached a two-minute warning, and the defense needs to come up with a stop to close this thing out. UConn comes to the line after getting another first down. Looking to move it through the air. That's caught. It's Humphreys. And the defense settled in to stop that one. Time where I'm a defense, I, I'm, I'm slow to get up. I'm making sure I stay on that offensive player. I'm trying to eat up as much clock and make this offense burn as much clock, Palmer, as I can. And this coaching staff right now, you know they're looking at the analytics too, right? How many timeouts do we have left? We want to think about dialing up some play calls that get... And it's picked off for the third time today. And they'll drag him down after a good return on the interception. It's such a fine line offensively. Late in the game, you've got to score, you've got to make big plays, but you can't turn the football over. Big time mistake, this one might cost them. Clemson ready to dial up some ball plays. They've got it on offense. So that defense keeps the lead right where it is and a chance to build on it, David. Yeah, the defense did a great job. Now, the offense, you know what you're going to get from this defense. They have to be aggressive. They're trying to get the football back later in the game, Jesse. Because they're going to be so aggressive too, David, you know on offense now, you have a chance to break one maybe in the run game or finding a one-on-one -on -one matchup in the passing game to really pad the lead. A strong tackle and wrap-up from the junior. Timeout called there by the defense, desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. You've got a third and manageable, backed up in your own end, but convert here and you get some momentum. Throws to the wideout. Balls and fired complete. Afterburners coming. The tap into the end zone unimpeded, except for that piece of laundry on the field. This might be coming back. <laughs> Just a crushing mistake on the penalty. Wipes out the touchdown, and now they'll have to try to get it together and score again. Lining up to convert third down. Linebackers moving, trying to confuse the quarterback. Out of the gun, the give to the back. They stop him after a short game. Probably just wanted to mitigate the losses with fourth down coming. Quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He's got great speed, and the returner will be brought down. The UConn offense goes back to work. Okay, one possession game. You've got some time to work with, but you have to make up some ground quickly, David. Got to be smart. Can't throw in front of the sticks. Can't get tackled in front of the sticks. Make sure we're taking some shots down the field, chewing up some yards. Jesse, the defense will be vulnerable. Yeah, and I think because of that, David, offensively, you got to have a plan. You got to know where your best matchup is out on the perimeter and who can make the big catches here in small windows. Hit hard as he released the ball on that first down pass, and it never had a chance. Misfired on the last play. They'll go back to the air. That pass is incomplete, and they might be fortunate. It wasn't not free for a fumble. It'll be third down. Third and long, defense knows the pass is coming, so they're going to have guys with their eyes on the QB, but they are going to try to get to him with pressure, pinning their ears back. If you're on offense, you might be thinking blitz here. You better get rid of this one quick. Trying to move the sticks on third down through the air. He took a hit as he threw it and couldn't deliver the football. It's incomplete, and fourth down's coming. After that incompletion, there is so much pressure now on this quarterback to come up with a big play. They need to score a touchdown. They need to keep this drive alive to have any shot at winning this game. But it all comes down to this play right here. He'll go up top. Maybe a deciding play here. He's got it. Touchdown, UConn. And in the final moments, they've taken the lead. Number nine. Man, this game has been incredible to watch, and the offense comes through late in the game, takes the lead. What a clutch drive by this offense. Now, I'm looking at you, defense. We got the lead late in the game. I need you to go put this thing on ice and win it for me.
This one's big to make sure they can't beat you with a field goal. He's got it, and the lead is up to a field goal. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And the clutch late score that almost certainly will be the game winner. Looks like he's going to try to return it. Good job by the coverage unit to stop the return man. He's trying to get them set quickly. They have to get the ball into field goal range. Trying to find his man on first down. A strike downfield. The offense uses a timeout. 15 seconds left to play. Got to move quickly here. They need to get it to field goal range. Wants to throw on first down. He finds a dead spot in the middle. Timeout called by the offense. A mere 10 seconds to go in the game. They've got it at the 37. It's first and 10. They'll run it out of the shotgun. Able to pick his way forward for a decent game before the defense gets him down. They get the timeout call with seven seconds left on the clock. This kicker is going to need nerves of steel on this one. Makes this one, and it'll be all tied up in the final minute. Just drives it between the uprights. And they tie it up, fellas, here. This kicker has ice water in his veins. Fourth quarter, you need to make the field goal to tie it up, and that kid just drilled it. On the move from inside his five. And the returner will be brought down. Well, guys, let's play some more. Headed to overtime. And this just feels right. Both of these teams going back and forth. So, of course, David, this thing needs to get decided in OT. Let's see who's better. Short amount of time to do it. A couple possessions, probably. Maybe one possession each. Who's the better team? All right, guys. So here we go in overtime. And just to refresh everyone's memory, alternating possessions starting on the opponent's 25. And it's so nice to be on defense first, to, to set the tone, to understand what you need. Try to hold them to a field goal. The offense knows they can do their job to go out and get a win. Just two possessions, Palmer. Like, you got to be at your best. Yeah, and I love the new rules, too, because in the third overtime possession, it goes to alternating two-point plays. Back and forth, who's got anything left in the tank here in OT? So here comes our first play of overtime. Let's it fly deep downfield. Touchdown, Clemson! They take the lead here in overtime. Well, I'm not sure who was closer to the receiver there, the defensive backs or us here in the booth. <laughs> that was great execution on offense. Receiver wins the route one-on-one, -on -one, shows off his speed, gets himself wide open. There was no question where the quarterback was going with that. Nice job. This extra point would give them a seven-point lead in OT. And the extra point is true, and they're on top by seven. That makes the score. Clemson, Now on first down, they need to answer with a touchdown. They'll throw it on first down. Pressure is on the way, and the pressure has arrived, and down he goes at the 30. They'll try to keep that sack from wrecking this drive here on second and 15. Now the play fake. Unloads to the wideout. Got his man downfield. And fired the completion there in the red zone and set up at the 13. They know what's in front of them. They have to answer that score with a touchdown. Coming out on first down with the play fake. Bottle little time lets it go. Touchdown, Huskies! They got it in the end zone. Now a decision to make with a point after. 
One of the reasons this offense is so exciting to watch, they've got guys that are dangerous after the catch. And if this quarterback gets through his progression, David, he hits you in stride, these guys will take it to the house. Man, it's your job to do the rest, right? You hit me in stride where I don't have to stop running, I don't have to break down. It makes it so easy, the connection between quarterback, wide receiver. You can tell this is a good one, and that's why they got six on that play. He's looking to throw. He's in! The two-point conversion in overtime. What a call to win the game. My pulse rate is still through the roof on this game. I would have called that one for free. Wait, I don't want to get carried away there, but it was a really fun game and a great win. <laughs> it really was. I know we're all up here. We're bouncing around. We're excited after having seen what we just saw. What a great win for this team to go out and do it in overtime. That's the type of game that fans are going to be talking about for a long time. Great. Yeah, right. If you know Reese Davis, that is not happening. But we got a free game that was awesome. Back and forth, nip and tuck, and bonus time. You got some free overtime play in that one. That's going to do it for us from here. For Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, I'm Reese Davis, and this has been another presentation of EA Sports College Football. Oof, what a game, man. What a game. 46-45 victory. Go for the two-point conversion, and we get it. Oh, my goodness, man. Moving that linebacker over to the left side. We got the running back and a streak. It was a perfect play call. Just completely opened up the middle of the field. Man, what a game. What a game. What a comeback, too. On, on that RPO, by the way, that little float interception, I did not mean to push that button. I Obviously, because then it was just floated there. So that sucked. That first, it was the first pick, I believe. Then the second one, we were trying to force it to Jimmy West, uh, and that didn't work out. And then I think the third one, we were again trying to force a deep throw that just wasn't really there. So yeah, three interceptions. Obviously, that's not the best. It wasn't good. It's not good for the stat line for Mike DeBose, but overall, great game. Way to hang in there with a the tough Clemson team. They're not ranked, but they are very tough. They're about a 90 overall team. So kind of the same situation as we had against Oklahoma. Just a very, very tough team. But we get the win. We escape. And I will see you guys tomorrow night for the Syracuse Orange matchup. Number two versus number one in our place. So it's going to be rocking and rolling here again. This is a brand new rivalry that's going on. Syracuse didn't respect us for a long time. But now we're here. We beat them twice last year. Once in the playoff. And now... Again, last season and regular season play. Now we get them one more time because we're in the ACC. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a fierce rivalry for years to come, guys. And you know what I think with some of the recruits on the board, if we can get a victory here, since we've got those guys visiting, if we can get a victory here against Q's and we can really do some damage, like maybe even a blowout, that'd be really nice to get a blowout here and second ranked team in the country. Not saying it's gonna happen, but it could. I think we might be able to nab those recruits that are visiting. So really make that visit count. So guys, I'll see you tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And we'll get this gameplay underway against the Syracuse Orange. As always, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you like this thing. I'll see you in the next one. As always, peace.